We're gonna do the basics of hydrographics. Everything you can do hydrographics from home. The easiest way you can do it, the cheapest way you can do it, giving you the most professional results out of cans and using the most basic things you can find at home. So everything here you can actually purchase at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any type of automotive shop, as in sandpapers, scuff pads, most primers that you can want to use and paints. So the only thing that you really need to order from the internet would actually be Activator, which is not sold. eBay, um, Amazon, anything that sells, all you have to do is Google Hydrographic Activator. They sell it in cans, or you can buy this kit right here. It'll give you a better mist. And if you buy it in a gallon, it's a way, way cheaper product than buying them out of a can. So what we're gonna start off with is basically the prep work. So these guys are hydro flasks. And what we wanna do is if a part has shine on it, we wanna get rid of the shine. The reason why is because we want the paint to stick. So we're dipping two of these things right now, which hydro flasks. Um, step number one with every single one of your parts, and that's always gonna be cleaning your part off from any grease, oil, because paint does not stick to that kind of stuff. So what we wanna do is clean this off. We're gonna sand it down. And with a part like this that is already smooth, already actually has paint on it, we're gonna use a scuff pad because this one will do minimum, like actual scuffing, so it gives you a better finish at the very end. So step number one is obviously the cleaning, which we already did prior to this. Step number two would be taping off the areas that you do not want the paint to show up on, which is essential to tape off extremely clean if you want your product to look the best you can do. And plus it keeps the part that your mouth will go on from having any paint on, if that's the goal. So we're gonna tape it off. Keeping it nice and tight. So we have a seal that has nothing on it. We want the paint not to go on any of this part. Everything else will be fine. And basically when it comes to what we're doing is the base coat, which means the color that it is now, or the color that we paint it, which would be considered the base coat, is gonna dictate exactly how the film looks like. So when hydro dipping, it is very, very essential that you choose the right base coat. Reason being is because if you use the wrong one, sometimes you will not see the design. So it's always better to go with a lighter base, meaning white, gray, silvers, yellows, oranges, reds, blues, even though blue is darker. Anything darker, like obviously blacks, really, really dark grays, you will not see much of the design. So as you can see from here to here, exact same product, this is just scratched. And the reason why we want this, so when we actually paint it, the paint actually has something to grip onto. So it gives you a longer lasting product. And you won't have any issues later on with actual paint chipping or coming off. So your better the prep, the better your dip. Hydro dipping is about 80% prep and paint. So for people that are trying to learn how to do this, my number one recommendation is become a good painter or have at least basic knowledge about it. Because the dipping part is hard, but once you do it enough, it becomes more of a natural thing. So let me... Step number two is obviously we're gonna paint this in a horror print which means it's obviously gonna look like a horror design has like, but it's a very dark print. So we want this to look white, not red, because if it's red, it's not gonna show as well. So what we have here is just a two in one, it's a primer, but this actually can be used as a base coat. So you can actually spray this and dip on the primer, it comes out perfect. So when it comes to painting, 
another big thing is I recommend is never paint near your house. Uh, never paint near cars, never paint anything that you can actually overspray. Um, because this stuff, it will mist outdoors. It's obviously preferred because the smell is actually strong. Make sure you shake your primer or your paints. And what you want to do is, especially with this kind of paint, give it a first lighter coat. And when I mean that, you can still see some of the red. That's just the first coat. A couple reasons why we do a lighter coat, especially with this kind of paint. Sometimes this paint will react to the paint that's on there or plastics. When if it does, you're kind of in a world of hurt. We will get into that in later videos, definitely. But for now, we're gonna just start off with this, which we know works. So once you're gonna let this sit for about three, maybe five minutes until it's dry to the touch and you're ready for your second coat, which would be a heavier coat. So, When it comes to hydrographics, also your film quality and the way the film is, has a lot to do with everything. The reason why is because if your film is too soft or hard, it literally will affect the way it actually expands in the water. So this may start off this small now, but when it's done, it'll actually grow. It's a grower. It'll actually grow. So for this piece right here, it's basically the way you want to measure your part. And you always want to make sure your characters are always going the correct way, obviously not backwards. So you want to make sure that you have enough from here to here. So we're going to use this whole entire piece, which should work in the size of this tub. Now, you'll see a lot of people on the internet actually use tape around the borders. I don't do that because I want my film to expand naturally. When you don't let it expand, sometimes you get wrinkles in the film. So film will always go side the film sticks to is a side that you're gonna actually wanna put it down on the water. So the way I laid down my film is I kind of lay it down like a blanket and the reason why is because I feel like I'm able to minimize the bubbles in the film and I'll explain to you what the bubbles do and what they are so even though the border is not wet it's fine we don't want the full thing to be in the water anyways but you will see how the film will actually start to wrinkle up we have room temperature water meaning water temperature does not have anything to do with the way your dip will come out <sighs> now there will be little bubbles when you lay down your film like right there if you can see that there's a bubble in the film What that does is if you leave that bubble in the, in the film without blowing it out, when you dip your part, that bubble stays there. And when you clean up the part, you will have a hole in the part. So this design will have a white hole in it because the white is the base is white. So we want to make sure that we remove the bubbles by blowing them out. You can blow hard. That's what she said. But the reason why is because this particular film is not gonna rip. If you're using a custom film, you have to be very careful the way you take the bubbles out because you can actually tear the film while it's in the water. So this guy right here, even if I push it hard, there's gonna be no holes unless it gets wet. So this is a very safe film that you can actually, half blue, half white. We're gonna use activator out of this little small can. <clears throat> and I must warn you guys, I've never used this before. So there's a good chance that I mess this up, but it is what it is. We're learning together. 
but <clears throat> I bought this to kind of get this and the wind. I'm not used to dipping in the wind either, ever. So, We did one spray through and you can already see how what ends up happening is when you touch the film, it already becomes a liquid. So you see how the film literally, wherever this activator touches, it actually became into now a paint and that's what it is. So we're gonna give two passes because I'm not exactly sure how much we sprayed, just to be a little bit on the safer side. When you dip a round object, you're obviously gonna always have a seam. So when you do this piece right here, if you go flat in, you're gonna have holes in it. Because what ends up happening is if you go flat in, there's, no, there's places where the air can't escape, so it has to create bubbles. So if you can go in at an angle, which will be like right here. Once you get down to the middle, then you start to turn it in towards your part. And that's what we'll have. Now, I can already tell you this did not come out perfect. The reason why is because I can tell that the film started to spread open. And that's just because two things. I did not spray enough activator with this particular piece or we let it sit in the water for a little bit too long. So I do not ever spray out of a can. So just letting you guys know that this is a first for me. I've never done it, it's always been. But for the most part, you can see how the design from the blue came out with the different base and then how you can see the design way, way more clear when the base is white. There's two things that can go wrong here. Now, when you do a white base, any type of flaw you see here, here, you can see way more of the white base. When you dip in a blue, if you have a mistake, like right there, since it's a blue bottom, it kind of, it blends it more. So there's benefits of painting things with a different base. You are able to get away with things more. If you have a flaw, you're able to touch it up easier because we make mistakes. It's painting in water and it's never perfect. Obviously, this did not come out nowhere near perfect, but at least I'm learning. So every week we'll try, we'll get better with this particular can. If not, then we'll try a different system. It's very easy. So the next one, we're going to do the same thing, but with the horror character, we're going to spray more of the activator and we're going to try to spray it more evenly. We should get a better result. So the easiest way to get the perfect size of the way you want to cut your film every single time, the easiest way is what you do is you grab a piece of tape and you measure your tank and you're going to lay it down on your table, rip it to where you're at. So that's basically how wide your, your, uh, your dipping surface should be. And then from there to there, do the same thing with this guy. Then you know exactly where you should be cutting your films. So this is basically the size of this guy. And then the size of this guy is the same width. Pretty much. And then width-wise, I mean, yeah. length-wise, I'm sorry, is pretty much identical. So this way, instead of kind of guessing the size of your tank or where you need to cut it or exactly the size, all you would have to do is lay down your film and you would basically cut it so you are not wasting film and when you lay your film down, you will actually have an easier area to work with so that's just a very quick and easy way to put in your film to fill in exactly what you need without having to use tape as your your surrounding border so you save a lot of time money and effort because once you do this if you're gonna a lot of people like i said tape off their edges you're wasting a lot of tape a 
you are wasting a lot of time and the film won't expand the way it's supposed to. So in reality, we're ready to dip this. So as you can see, the film fit into the tank pretty much perfect. Um, we have separation here and here, which is fine because you're gonna see this film once it starts to hydrate, it's gonna actually expand and it should fill in exactly to what we want. It might be a little, but it's gonna be very close, very close. <clears throat> and whenever you see your edges roll like this, it's because the film is dry. You can see how it starts to wrinkle up. That means your film is hydrating. What is end up happening, it's going to expand and you'll see how the edges will start to fill in more. And you want it to expand, you really, really do. That means your film is doing what it's supposed to. So once it expands, you'll see it start to smoothen out, as in all the wrinkles in it. Now, when you're dipping in regular temperature water, meaning we're not dipping in hot water the way they say you're supposed to, you will still obviously get the same results because I've been doing it for about seven years in cold water. And to me, you will get a better color retention. Now, another thing that if you do not tape your edges off, one thing that I will recommend also is it does require tape, but if there is separations or gaps in the edges, the easiest way to fix that is just to put a little bit of tape. Tape does float magically. And what that does, it allows the film not to expand. And the reason why you want your film to expand that much is because if it expands too much, you will literally lose color retention. So the black or the blue or whatever color it is will start to fade. So you want the, the, the film to stay as tight as possible to keep the film exactly where it's supposed to be. Another big thing about hydro dipping is your air pressure when you spray your activator. Consider this print in the water is perfect the way it sits. So if you spray your, your pressure and you spray too hard, meaning you're spraying too much air, you're gonna move the print, which will cause it, the mummy will actually be deformed or this face of Chucky will be fat. So you have to make sure that you do it at a distance and not too close to keep everything nice and tight. So we're gonna go again, activator. So usually with an actual gun gun, two coats, you go side to side and then up and down. So once again, I'm gonna do one more spray. It might be too much, but since I'm dipping outdoors and there is a lot of wind and I've never used this thing before, but we're gonna give it a shot. I can see what it So start at your angle, dip in. Once you get to the middle point of your dip, start to roll it towards. This is a harder dip to do in reality because it is a round surface. But if you can do a cup, you can pretty much do anything. Now, if you see the way the film liquefied right here compared to here, meaning this right here is perfect, meaning it's liquid. This right here, how it broke apart, it still needed some activators. So we will fix the kinks in that gun setup. But for the most part, compared to our first dip, this was a completely successful dip. And you can see how the coverage came out pretty much perfect. The design came out perfect. Everything looks nice. You have your seam right here. We have a little bit of white right there. But the reason why is because I told you the activation wasn't perfect, but we can touch that up with black paint and we'll have a flawless dip. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to clear coat this. 
which will be the final part of our dipping process. And I bought the clear so you guys can see how to do this from home. And um, for now, this guy right here, it has a slime. Every time you dip a part, you can see how it has a slime. The reason why I leave the parts in water is to get the slime off. Two, two ways to remove the slime is by leaving it in the water for a while, spinning it, or you can use a hose, spray it off. That requires a lot of water. If you want to save money and you want to just do the same result, just leave it in the water for like 15 minutes and eventually it'll, it'll come off. Then you let it dry in the sun. We're going to clear coat. You're going to have a finished product. So like everything, especially when it comes to these type of cans, wearing proper mask, extremely well ventilated area. Do indoors if you can. Obviously read your instructions, two minutes shaking, take the top off, primer in the bottom. You're gonna push it twice facing down, shake it for another two minutes and then you're ready to spray. So it's essential you do this stuff because if not, not going to spray the way it's supposed to. Spraying with this particular can, clear. This is the one that came out bad. We're spraying this just to have the actual spraying going down. And you can see the change in the finish. So we are outdoors. It is windy today, so this will actually spray everywhere. But we might have to spray a little bit closer to what we want. But it's usually about 10 inches away. So first coat, you want to go in not too heavy. You don't want to keep your hand on the trigger fully. Kind of give it a lighter coat. And we're going to let that sit. So you see already how there's more of a gloss shine into the part. And I also recommend never letting your parts dry in direct sunlight. And the reason why is because you, do you don't want it to dry so quick the reason being is because when it does the clear coat doesn't get it dry properly and you you get a dull uh, a dull finish meaning it's not as shiny as it's supposed to be also make sure since we're dipping we're, we're clearing this right after we did the part make sure the part's dry So I know that we're dipping with water, but water when it comes to clear coating is your worst enemy. You wanna make sure your part is completely, completely dry. So when it comes to clear coating, there's something that we call a flash time. So you see how the color, the clear is there, shiny, kind of like a car finish. And that's exactly what you want. What you want to do is you want to wait, depending on how hot it is in the day, anywhere from five to 10 minutes in between every single coat. So we're going to let this sit for about five minutes. You'll be able to touch it. Once you feel the, the clear coat is really, really sticky, it's, it's, a good time to, to re-clear coat. You don't want to go too heavy because if you do, you're going to actually catch drips in it. So you kind of want to give it the time to actually dry enough for the next coat to actually stick really well. But you don't want to overdo it because then you're going to have drips in your part. So let it sit, let it dry, be patient with it. And then we'll go again right now. The clear coat that we are recommending right here, it is expensive, but it is very much worth it.
So this second coat will be heavier, meaning more material. We want it to glass out to make it look more like a, a car finish. So you will go heavier, not too heavy, quicker motions because you don't want it to sit and actually drip. Make sure you get every part covered. Once we have it, you see how it looks very, very, very much, literally almost like a car finish. So you guys see it, it is, it's very much glass. So this clear coat, like I said, it is expensive. Here's the second one, even though, like I said, we mess this up, we're still gonna clear it just for purposes of, I'm gonna change the spray. Instead of going this way, we're gonna go up and down. I might overdo it, but it is what it is. And there is water drops on it, but it is what it is. So you can kind of see very much also extremely smooth, extremely glossy, very, very nice finish. Out of a can, you really can't beat it ever. <clears throat> so basically what we got start to finish. This was done all in a day. We will be getting into way more detail on the hydrographic process itself. But as you can see, this guy is dry, good to touch. It came out with a nice shine. The goal of this is to teach you guys how to do this at home. A goal of this also is to teach you how to hydro dip, maybe make some extra cash. The biggest thing for me is if you want to teach your teenage kids how to start hydro dipping from home, they can start doing things for their friends at school. Teach them a business aspect about life, which is very important to me. Um, teach them how to be independent, how to make their own money, how to purchase their own things at a young age. And you're going to teach them more than just dipping. You're going to teach them how to be business savvy. So there's also a lot of reasons why I want to get this out there. Um, but if you can make some extra money at home um, to help you support you or your family, that's also a goal of mine. So these things right here, obviously this unit right here probably costs about $15. Once you put your time, labor, and anything, you guys can sell these things for 50 to 60 to $70, depending on how much detail you put into them. But like I said, we did these in a couple hours while we were explaining. This could have been done in less than 30 to 40 minutes. Um, so you can do these extremely quick and you can actually make a lot of money doing this if you do it right and um, if you take your time doing it correct. So thanks. And we will be definitely doing more videos with a lot more different things shoes, uh, controllers, playstations. We'll be using different buckets. We'll be showing you bigger buckets. We'll show you compressors. We'll show you guns. We'll show you primers. We'll show you everything, but just subscribe if you guys wouldn't mind. And uh, we'll definitely get into the details of the video. You can see Thanks, guys. Yeah, we were built to thrive, yeah I think that we've all had enough What keeps you up at night, yeah Make all the demons quiet, yeah